Good evening, everyone. That's good to see everybody. Why don't we uh, stand and we'll get started. We've got a lively crowd tonight. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God. Oh my Lord, strength and my redeemer is in you and I put my trust you are my rock the God of my salvation my oh, praise to praise you Lord oh, my Let's try it again let the words Words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O oh God. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O oh God. Oh my Lord, my strength and my it's in you that I put my trust. You are my rock, the God of my salvation. I want to praise, want to praise you, Lord, oh my Oh my Lord, oh my Lord. Strength and my redeemer. It's in you that I put my trust. You are my rock, the God of my salvation. I to praise you, Lord, with all my Praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Good evening, church. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. For those of you who are with us on Facebook Live, we just want to tell you good evening. We're so blessed that you're able to uh, partake of this por uh, portion of our fellowship and worship. And for our announcements this week, we would like to bring your attention to our Calvary Chapel, Hrupa Valley. This is our spring into summer event. It's going to be on Saturday, June 12th. Free barbecue and music and, and free goofing off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yay. <laughs> we have our um, Agape Way that is meeting this Friday. Double check the date. Yes, it's going to be this Friday um, at 7 p.m. And they usually meet in the kitchen. So you can see Brother Ta Danny and Sister Terry if you have any questions about that. So th once again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Good morning as we... Come into your word tonight. Speak to us through your word. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here with us, and we love and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.
God is good. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. So, in January, I had just come off COVID, and we yeah. I was pretty praising God that I got off of that, and we did Psalm one. In February, we did Psalm three. At the end of February, we did Psalm three. At the end of March, which was uh, our Passion Week, we did Psalm 22. Last month, the end of April, we did Psalm 19. Specifically, that last song we just sang, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. And it's kind of funny that we were going to do that song tonight and... At work today, uh, we had a full, we had uh, kind of a, like a little lunch for my boss. It was his birthday, so we all brought in food, so it was pretty good. The food was really good, and of course the company is pretty good. When they keep the, the snide remarks and the craziness down. But today, of course, I was going to do worship, and of course tonight we're going to do teach this. <laughs> So uh, they were in rare form today. <laughs> so it's like, you know, let the words of my mouth. And I don't expect any of them to be, they're not Christians at all, but, um, yeah, I, I, was, <laughs> I just almost was like, you guys, would you shut up, you know? But it's okay. We got through it okay. Today we're going to do probably the most popular psalm ever. Everybody knows it. Good, bad, the ugly. We all, we all know it. It's uh, Psalm 23. Last year, when the, the stout-hearted men were, were shut down because of the, the restrictions that we had, Pastor Gray asked me to... This was kind of like the, the inspiration for six months later when Pastor Greg talked to me about not doing the men's study anymore and letting him take it and then letting me do the study in Psalms was I would put together these little few minute devotions um, and just post them on Facebook and then Pastor Greg would take them and put them on the Calvary Chapel site here and so it was kind of crazy. But my first one was out of Psalm 23 and it really... It really inspired me to write the, the, the last song we're going to do tonight, a worship song. And so let's pray and we'll get started. Lord, nothing but good from you and we praise you for that. So Lord, let our ears be open and our hearts be open. Help us, Lord, if we hear something that cuts us to know that it's not because you're mean, it's because you love us and you're trying to get a hold of us. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Here in chapter 23, we are likened to sheep. Um, you know, shoot, sheep are cute. You know, they have the fur and, you know, they're docile. You know, you can go up to them and pet them. And sometimes they'll run away and they look kind of funny. But that's what we're likened to. But we shouldn't get too excited about that because sheep are about the stupidest animal on the faith of this earth. They've said that. Basically, one sheep will get scared and bolt for a cliff, and all the other sheep will follow after him. He's, you know, okay, I guess I'll run and kill myself too, you know. It's like, I, you remember that, that cartoon, The Far Side? Some of the characters that were dri- drawn on that, that's what I think a lot of made those, those comics so funny. But that's what I picture a sheep, you know, kind of a dummy, you know. But... It wasn't lions. We are, we're not. We're not. Uh, we're not liking the lions or tigers or bears. There we go. Good job, guys. Good job. At least some of you are listening. Or speedy gazelles or wise servants. But no, we were likened to sheep. And I hate to tell you that just they're not the smartest. We are not. Sometimes they are very passive. And have been known to, again, you know, wander off cliffs, drown in shallow water, and the like. That's why we need a shepherd. The good shepherd. Amen? That's right. Jesus. 
Let's look at this beautiful psalm to encourage and uplift us. Verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We can just stop right there. The Lord is our shepherd. Hey, because he's our shepherd, hey, I'm not going to want. You know, oh, it's Sam, you mean it's bad if we, you know, we want to have something? No, it's, it's not bad to desire something like, like a car or a house. Um, I, you know, me being a guitar player, you know, it's not bad to desire a guitar. Many times, I should say, but, um, but it's bad to covet, to want, like to be jealous of somebody. Oh, look at that car they're driving. No, man, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with, with good desires, godly desires. Um, God is so good and so kind to provide for us, huh? Because Jesus watches over me and knows me best and all of us best, he gives me all I need. We have food to eat, clothes to wear. Uh, we've got a car to drive to work. Sherry has a car to drive. You know, I was 20 years old. I, we just celebrated it on Monday. It was our 41th wedding, 41st wedding anniversary. And so praise the Lord for that. But amen. Praise the Lord. But when we got married, Sherry had a a 68 Pontiac that she'd bought for four. I wish we still had that car. Man, that was such a cool car. And um, I had a, a 1977 Chevy Cheyenne that was a short bed that had a little shell on it. I wish I still had that truck. Oh my gosh. We had that. I lived in an apartment. I paid 350. We had food in the cupboards. I had some old furniture in the living room. And uh, we had, of course, our bedroom, uh, the, you know, the bed, the dresser. And basically, that's when we got married. That's basically what we had. When we were planning our getaway, because we were planning on running off and getting married. Um, no, she wasn't pregnant, by the way. We wanted to get married. And her dad said, no, long story. We'll, I'll, I'll spare you. But so we decided we wanted to be together. We wanted to move married so we got together and we took out a piece of paper and a pencil it took all of about five minutes to put our finances together turned out at the end of the time we had five hundred dollars cash and uh, our truck and our car and that was it so people have asked me over the years what is your secret there's no secret at all when we got married we, we hit the justice of the peace there on Vegas Boulevard about um, just after midnight. And me and Sherry got married. There were a justice of the peace and his wife. They were like in their 80s. They were looking at us like, okay, this is going to last about three minutes. <laughs> I never forget that. And, uh, me and Sherry were like, okay, so we, we went across the street to a little hotel and got us a room. And then we had phone calls to make. I had to call my mom and dad. She had to call her mom and dad because they were expecting her home. I lived in my apartment. But we had to make calls. And the first thing we did when we came into that place was we put our bags down and we knelt down together. And we dedicated our marriage to God. Well, you know, it was kind of good that we put our money together and we realized we didn't have any money because for the next 41 years, there you go. But <laughs> he has always kept us. We have always had something to eat when we were raising kids. We were <laughs> I got to tell this story. This made me laugh last night. This just happened last night. I was supposed to be here last night, and right as I'm getting ready to leave, Luna comes up. We were watching our granddaughter, and she's, Papa? You draw with me? And I said, well, honey, I got to get going. And she's like, Pop. And I'm like, wow, well, sorry, guys. So we, we were drawing together, and then um, we had dinner. I got her a burrito, and I got Sherry a couple burritos. So the burrito's about this big. She ate about that much of it, you know. And I kept saying, honey, 
you need to sit down and eat your dinner. Oh, Papa, I'm not hungry. And I said, come on, sweetheart, sit down and eat your dinner. Well, she was up and around. I thought, Sherry goes, let her graze. She'll do that. And I said, okay. So I come back in a few minutes later, and she has a bowl. And in that bowl, she has like a thing of cookies because we got those little Oreos, you know, those ones that come in a big bag. Sherry had poured a big thing in the bowl, and I, I see, and I'm looking at her, and she's eating these cookies. And I said, well, I thought you were, weren't hungry. She goes, I'm, I'm not. And I said, well, why are you eating the cookies? Because I like cookies. <laughs> oh, this kid is going to be the biggest brat the world has ever seen, thanks to me and Sherry. But um, <laughs> God has always kept us. And yeah, okay, maybe we haven't eaten steak every night, but God has always kept us. We've always had food. And when there were times when we didn't know where our next meal was going to come for, God always provided. There was just, it's, it's amazing. He does that to us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. First Timothy 6.6 6, it says it best, godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen? God is good. He has our every need in his hands, and it is very comforting to know that this is his, not ours or mine. Remember what Psalm 8411C says, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. So that's a promise. When we're seeking something and we're asking him for it, a car, that's not a bad thing if you don't have one. If you have a, a couple cars and you're asking for another one, well, that might be stretching it. But, you know, it's, not, it's awesome to ask God and watch him do this work. Psalm 34, 9 and 10 says, Oh, fear the Lord, you as saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Awesome. Some maybe in TV land is, are watching and saying, I don't really believe in God. I'm telling you right now, 41 years ago, uh, actually it was 43 years ago, I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. He did. He took, I was lost. I wasn't a bad, I wasn't like doing all these crazy things. I was just a regular kid, but I needed Jesus and he came in and he made me new and he's never let me down. Has he ever let you guys down? Nope. Never. Verse 2, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Think about some of you nature lovers or those that like to hike. Think about like green pastures, beautiful, lush, deep green, very soothing, very calm. I love it. You can sit and take it in, whether it be... Um, whether it be like a lake or the ocean, the mountains. You know, me and Sherry went up to the mountains in October, and during the day it was about 73, so it was perfect. The wind would pick up at night, and of course we'd kind of come in because it was getting cold. But we, I'd go out, stand outside and just listen to that. It just was so peaceful. And then in the morning when I'd wake up, I'd put my slippers on and go, sit on the front porch and worship the Lord, overlooking the lake. Unbelievable how serene and how calm and beautiful. We can sit and take in. Also, we can be made to sit through circumstances, through sickness, trials, and tribulations. Any circumstance that will cause you to seek him, not only is it a place of great comfort and peace, but it can also be something that causes us to draw close or closer to him. See, those green pastures will cause you to sit and look around or at the ocean, sit and meditate and think on things, but it can also be a time to sit and think about what's going on right now. Lord, what are you trying to tell me? It was really weird. I'd gone to a bigger church for quite a few years, for, for almost, it had been all, that year it was gonna be my 
14th year in January, and I'd been involved in, a, in the junior high ministry, and um, I remember every year for the previous 13 years, I'd ask God, what do you, at the start of the year, what do you want me to do? Because I was doing the um, junior high ministry. I'd been doing that for like 13 years. I was doing the men's prayer breakfast. I was also uh, doing the new believers class on Monday nights, doing worship there. And every year I'd ask, Lord, what is it you'd want? And I'd hear either nothing or much of the same, keep on, you know. And all of a sudden, 05 comes around and, you know, the new year comes by. And I said, Lord, what do you want? What do you want from me? I didn't hear anything. And I thought, okay, maybe he wants me to stay. But I kept asking him, Lord, what is it you want? It was towards the end of that month of January when the Lord said, I'm going to move you on. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I didn't know why, and I kept it to myself. I didn't talk to Sherry about it. I kept it to myself. And so there were a lot of times when I'd meditate. Coming home from work, I'd turn off the radio, um, uh, you know, take Saturday at the park or with my acoustic or whatever. I just, I did this for a few months. And then in May of that year, of 05, um, a friend of mine asked me to play guitar for at a worship thing at a Presbyterian church in Riverside, right on Magnolia there. And so I went and played, um, and I met the associate pastor. He was a wonderful brother. He actually could have been a, he actually could have been a Calvary Chapel pastor. He was just, he was on fire for the Lord. He loved the Lord. He was a soul winner the whole nine yards. Unfortunately, he wasn't the one I was going to have to answer to. It was the, the pastor because this person that I was playing with, I was going to do this two times in a row, two Sundays in a row, and she, she told me, she goes, hey, they're looking for a worship leader here for the young people. Why don't, you, why don't you do it? And I thought, wow. So afterwards, I knew that's what the Lord wanted me to do. To really, I'd been playing worship and doing worship for quite a few years, but this was like to take it to, the, to be a worship leader. Well, they picked someone else. I put my name in. I met with the associate. He was a great guy. But then I met the, the, the regular pastor. And uh, anyway, we, uh, he was a Presbyterian pastor. And so I'll leave it at that. But um, So I knew that's what the Lord wanted me to do. He wanted me to be a lead, worship leader. So I waited until, <coughs> excuse me, I waited. <laughs> This is funny. I waited until the end of July, or actually it was the 1st of August of 05. So I've been, I've been, you know, chewing on this for a few months. And I had, I was on call that weekend and I got a call to go down to Orange County and I came back. I was home by about 7.30 and Sherry was hanging out. We had some people over, they left. And finally I said, hey, sweetheart, I need to talk to you about something. She goes, okay, what is it? And I said, I think the Lord wants me to be a worship leader. She goes, you're already a worship leader. I said, no, like be the worship leader. And she goes, oh, well, where? And I said, I don't know. But I said, I don't think we're going to be in Riverside. And she goes, if God wants me to, to go with you, then he's going to come down and help us move himself. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, well, we didn't really talk about it. It, not, it didn't get tense or anything. It was just, you know, I, I actually kind of laughed about it. But So what, what the next morning was Sunday, so I got up to go to church. I would go to first service because I was the first worship. I was the service leader for the junior high. I was going to do worship too. So that meant I was going to be there all four services. So um, Sherry would meet me for second service. And she comes into the tent where we were at. And she said, I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit had convicted me like you wouldn't believe. And I said, well, honey, it's OK. We're fine. We all make mistakes. We're good. And she goes, I know where we're supposed to go. I'm like, God put that in your heart? She goes, yeah. I said, where? She goes, Hesperia. I was like, Hesperia? She goes, how far is it? I'm like, it's about 45 minutes away from here. And she goes, that's where we're supposed to go. So we went up, we bought a house, we sold our house, 
we were going to the big church up there and then it wasn't going to happen there a few months later we said okay um sherry goes i told her i don't feel it here and she said she felt the same way so we decided let's look at small churches so we went to calvary chapel of victorville and that was as pathetic as i've ever heard anything and i said this is where we're going to stay two years later is when god opened the door for me to be the worship leader so god knows he keeps us and it's in these times though these green pastures whatever your green pasture is like i said a lake a, a river the ocean the mountains the desert whatever god that's where he gets our attention it's like remember john 4 jesus talking to the woman at the well he was talking to her about living water he was talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit to overflowing. She thought he was telling her about another source of water so she wouldn't have to go all the way to the well and also not have to deal with the snooty women. Well, thinking of peace and joy in our lives, it only comes by being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the other thing. When you ask God to show you what he wants, he will. He will. And it's crazy. Peace, joy, comfort, peace in the midst of pain and suffering is ours. God is so kind to give us so much. Glory to God. Verse 3. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God's love for us is immeasurable. When we were lost, he died for us. But God demonstrates in, in Romans 5, 8 through 11, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the re reconciliation. We have been made right with God because of his sacrifice for us. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. Twice in the Gospels, we're told that if we desire him, we'll be satisfied. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I have a guy, a buddy of mine. You guys have met him. You're going to meet him uh, when we play music. He's in both bands. He plays bass. Donnie McCleary, my buddy Donnie McCleary. I met Donnie about, about, oh, about 13 or 14 years ago with this ill-fated band that we were both in. And uh, we just stayed friends. Well, Don, Donnie has a really... When I met him, he was playing in a Christian band, but he wasn't a Christian. I think like, wow. He was in, like a Jehovah Witness. And he basically said, hey, if you don't mind me playing bass, and even though I'm not a Christian, I'm a Jehovah Witness, um, you know, we're okay. And the leader said, oh, yeah, that'll be fine. And I was like, well, I'm not the leader, but, uh, but I met the guy, talked to him. He's the sweetest guy ever. We talked music, baseball, Dodgers, yeah, whole nine yards. Donnie's the best. Well, if I've ever met somebody that hungered and thirst for righteousness, he told me later on as we got to know each other, he'd been kicked out of the Jehovah Witnesses for questioning scripture. Said, why does it say this? And it's, that's not the way it is. Well, that's the Holy Spirit. He got kicked out of the Witnesses. Well, all of a sudden, me and Sherry moved back down here from, from the high desert. We moved back down here. And I called Don and I said, hey, I'm ready to put together a band. And he goes, cool. So I had to get my garage around. I did. Donnie starts playing with the band. Now, up to this point, now Donnie is starting to go to church, but he's not a Christian yet. He starts going to church. But what would happen is we practiced on Monday nights. So Monday nights, he'd stay until the wee hours in the morning, and we'd talk gospel. We'd talk about the Bible. And one day about a year later a year and a half into this Donnie calls me 
on the phone. I was watching the game or something. He goes, Sam, I want to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. So we prayed for Donnie. We prayed right then and there, and it's been, it's awesome. Now he's leading a Bible study with his family. He's got like 15 people that are watching this Bible study on Tuesday nights. The guy is awesome. He desired God. He was Jehovah's Witness. It's wrong. It's wrong doctrine. It's wrong everything. It's totally wrong. It's a cult. And God kept him and brought him through. How awesome is that? That is so awesome. And then also the second scripture, the first one was Matthew 5, 6. Second one is John 1, 12 and 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of man, but of God. Wow. Because of his great love with which he loves us. Think about that one for a minute. He did this 2,000 years ago before we were born. Before we were born, and he died on that cross for us anyway. And he even died for the, the, the hardest atheists out there. He died for the whole world is what it says. And he did it because of his love. Crazy. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The shepherd keeps us through good and bad. He lovingly keeps his even when we go, we're going through deep ravines or unsafe conditions. That's what a, that's what a shepherd does. He'll bring you, he brings the sheep. You know, it's not always flat ground. Sometimes they have to go up hills. Sometimes they have to go down hills. Sometimes they have to go into valleys where the ravines are with growth, and it can be dangerous because there can be predators waiting to get a sheep. There's a little way he protects his sheep. We'll get into that in a minute. But he always takes care of the sheep. How about you guys? Has he ever done that for you? Is he taking care of you? Amen. All of us can testify of the kindness and the greatness of God. How awesome. Because of whose we are, his, we can have peace in the worst of times. Verse 4b, for you are with me. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and in the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Now check this out. And lo, I am always with you, even to the end of the age. He is always with us. He'll never let us down. He doesn't take coffee breaks. He always takes care of us. Well, wait a minute, Sam. What about that brother? I knew this guy. He was loving the Lord, and he got killed in a, in a car accident, or he fell off a cliff. What about him? What did, was God watching over him? Yeah, he was. It just means it was his time to go and that God will use the circumstances to honor and glorify himself. Happens all the time. Amen. All the time. Amen. He's always with us, a promise. And then, again, here we go. Verse 4c. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod was like just a piece of wood that you know, when he could hold, maybe he had a grip on it, would be used to ward off animals that wanted to eat the sheep. So, a, you know, a, a coyote or a wolf comes up, he's going to get hit with that rod. It doesn't hurt. It hurts, especially if you get hit on the head with it. It'll probably kill you. But also, there was another reason the rod was used, and that was to break the legs of naughty sheep who wouldn't listen. Oh. I don't believe that. I believe God is, he's a God of love, would never do that. Yeah, right. How many of you have ever got a spanking for something you've said or done and you've had to deal with the discipline of God? Romans, or I'm sorry, Hebrews 12, 1 and 5 talks all about that. Put that down, Hebrews 12, 1 and 5, and read that later. It talks about, hey, who God loves, he disciplines. 
So this whole thing of, oh, flowers and, oh, my, my soft hands. Oh, my God, give me a break. That's not God. That's not Jesus. But they're used, that shepherd will use if they keep bringing back a sheep because once a sheep gets out on his own, man, that's like, he might as well lay on a plate. He's going to be eaten with potatoes and carrots, you know. I know I would. I'd eat it. But um, I've never had sheep. Anybody in here eat sheep? Eh, never mind. But so what they'll do, yeah, lamb. I don't like the mint jelly. But what, the, what he'll do is if they keep on getting away, he'll finally just bam on their leg and break their leg. Now they can't do it. Oh, that's just mean. No, it's not. It saved his life. See, that's what God has to do sometimes to us. There's actually a scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 8. I don't have this wrote down. But I want to tell you, it just came to my mind right now. 5, 8. It says that the Lord will, if you are not going to listen to him, the Lord will take you home. The Lord will take you home. So that's how much he loves you. It's not all flowers and, like I said, you know, lilies and stuff like that. Or you know how women have their parties and they have those little sandwiches. Those You talk about worthless. You know, those little sandwiches that are, you know, you pick them up like that. And I was like... Give me a break when we talk guys, when we talk sandwiches, man. We're grabbing onto a sandwich and, man, we got, you know. There we go. That's just something I put in there. But God will do that. Protection for protection to beat off a wolf or a sheep or a, or not a sheep, but a wolf or a, you know, a prey, uh, something that's its, its prey. Yeah. He'll use that, that, uh, that rod. Bam. But he'll also use it as discipline. Bam. Much like Jesus is with us, he protects us and he disciplines us. Again, Hebrews 12, 1 and 5. The staff was a long pole with a hook on the end, used to pull the sheep back into the fold. When they'd get into the bushes, they could reach in and just pull that little guy out. Just like when we accept Jesus, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit keeps us even when we want to stray. I had been in the junior high ministry for about a year and I was really going through some struggles, really hard struggles. And I just, in my heart, I said, we, um, Forrest asked my band to come up and play for the kids up for camp and I said okay yeah I'll do it and I didn't say anything to him but I, I just told the Lord okay after camp that's it I'm, I'm done and so we got up to camp Friday night we were going to be Friday night and stay there and then Saturday morning play and then it was pretty much over and I was getting ready setting up my stuff and Forrest comes up to me and he goes hey Sam um, someone I'd like you to meet he introduces me to this little girl I mean, she was like a little girl. I mean, really a little girl. And I'm like, oh, okay, hi. Hi, sweetheart. I shook her hand. And Forrest goes, she wants to talk to you. And I said, oh. And I looked at Forrest. I said, what? About what? He goes, well, talk to her. He goes, I'm gonna, I'll be over here if you need me. So I sat down with her and I said, what's up, little cutie? You know, I wanted to do that to her. She said, she's shaking like a leaf. She goes, the Lord wants me to tell you something. And I'm like, Oh, really? The Lord wants you to tell me something. And I was kind of, to be honest with you, I didn't have a good attitude about it. And I said, what did the Lord tell you? And she goes, the Lord told me that he wants you to stay. Don't leave. And I looked at her. I could not believe what she had just told me. I had told no one. The Holy Spirit, though, he kept me. He keeps us, guys. That's another fruit of how much he loves us. He gives us this down payment after we accept him. He fills us with his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit keeps us. We don't go wandering off. He keeps us. How awesome is that? Even when we want to stray, he keeps us. 
Verse 5. We're getting close. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Notice he didn't say that the enemies were removed. So you prepare a, a table before me in the presence of all my friends or acquaintances. No. Enemies. He is right by our side. He prepares a table for us to come to have fellowship right in front of our enemies. When we confess our sins, he forgives us of our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. John, 1 John 1, 1, 9. When we are condemned by the enemy of our souls and those enemies of the faith, his word lets us know that he's got us. Romans 8, 1. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk according to his spirit and not the flesh. His word, when applied, shuts up the enemy of our souls. Remember John, or I'm sorry, remember Matthew chapter 4? What did Jesus do when the devil came? Hey, bow down and worship me. He said, be gone, Satan. I'm going to bring my angels. They're going to kill you. Do it now, angels. <laughs> That's what I would have done. He didn't do that. He used God, his word. He used his word as the weapon. It is written. It is written. It is written. Guys, we need to know his word. The table that we're talking about is also the table that we can fellowship with God. But what's another place for the table? The communion table. The blood and the broken body, the bread. How they symbolize that fellowship, that intimate fellowship with God. That's that table. You know, we can, like I said, make peace with God any time, but how cool is it to do that and take communion and worship the Lord or whatever it be? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All the days of my life, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When it's over, since coming to know Jesus I've gone through many trials and tribulations, just like many of you have. Just it's too numerous to count. And yet, his promises to keep and walk with us have never failed. Matthew eleven twenty eight and 30 tells us why. I didn't write that one down. I was just going to throw it to you, but I'm going to read that to you. That was a scripture I read the night, a few nights after I accepted the Lord when the Holy Spirit dropped chains off me, chains of sin. Matthew, write this down and make it a promise. 28, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You know what a yoke is? Remember in the days of yore, back in the biblical days, they had those wagons with the gigantic wheels and they would, they would use oxen to pull those wagons with whatever it be, their goods or their, you know, their household. If they were moving, they'd get heavy, so they needed these gigantic beasts of burden, um, ox, these oxen, and they would put this wood thing that would keep the two oxen in line, and they'd pull it so it would turn, pull it, turn, go faster, pull back slow. Um, and Jesus says here in verse, in verse 30, take my yoke upon you because it's easy. That means he's going to be in the, the next yoke. That means basically, man, we have it made. He's going he's gonna to take care of us because he loves us. He always keeps and watches us. He is to be praised. And then one day, when this is all over, we will go to be with him forever. Back in 92, I'd started a new job, and I was driving a Toyota pickup truck. Uh, one of the little beds. It had the, the bed, but it had dualies in the back. And I didn't realize that that thing would not steer it would not steer because it had so much tools in the back. And I was driving down the 91 freeway going to work 
at seven in the morning, and um, all of a sudden, I saw this car come blasting by me in pouring rain at about, it was going, it had to have been going 100 miles an hour. And I thought, oh my gosh, this guy is going to hit somebody. And all of a sudden, the whole freeway is going and it's pouring hard. And all of a sudden, I'm looking and I see something in the freeway. And I look and it's that car spinning around. He'd lost control. And guess what lane he's in? He's in my lane. So I slammed on the brakes, tried to steer. It, that thing just kept going straight. I hydroplaned. It wouldn't steer. And I'm looking at these people. They're looking at me. And I'm watching them, watching them, watching them, watching them. And I was able to get it slowed down enough to where it just damaged the front end of mine. We went boom. And I was like, oh, man. And I looked in my rearview mirror, and I couldn't see anything except for this big panel. And I thought, what the heck is that? And I looked behind me, about 10 feet behind my, my little tr Toyota truck was a jackknifed big rig. The guy jackknifed it because of Nadia to run over me, and I wouldn't be here. But the cool thing is I didn't have any fear or freaked out at all because I, the Lord had me. Amen. It's a win-win situation. I got to live and be used some more, praise the Lord. And if not, if I'd have died, I would have went to be with him. So praise the Lord. God is good. He, we don't know how many times he's watched, watched over us. So I encourage us to grab onto his word, know his word, how he watches over us. Remember the wonderful promise Jesus told us in John 14, 1, I go and I prepare a place for you. Almost 2,000 years have passed since Jesus made this promise. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. You'll know my house because you'll hear the guitars playing out of it. And it's wonderful as believers that we have this promise to, to know Jesus and know that regardless how young or old we've been or how long we've lived for him or not as long, he loves us and he's there for us. We have all these wonderful promises. And you might be saying, that sounds really cool. The problem with this is the fact that this isn't for everybody. What do I mean by that? Oh, you mean only certain people get selected? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Is that you have to make peace with God before you can grab these promises. Well, you know, I'm a you know, I'm an American. I live in America. Isn't that a Christian nation? I hope that's not what a Christian nation looks like. There has to come a point in your life where you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. What do you mean by that, Sam? You asked Jesus to forgive you for the sins that you've committed. Oh, I, I don't sin that much. If you sin once in your life, it's enough to send you to hell. You need to look at the Ten Commandments. Well, Sam, nobody can keep the Ten Commandments. That's right. That's why Jesus came and died on the cross, rose three days later, and now he sits at the right hand of the God, of his Father, making intercession for us. Amen. But in order to come and be a believer, you have to take the first step. You need to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Oh, well, I, I went to one of those crusades a long time ago. I asked the Lord to come into my heart. I went down with a bunch of my friends, but... You know, no, that's not what he's talking about. It's not a prayer. It, the prayer is, if you believe in your heart, Amen. you confess with your mouth, Romans 10, 9, and 10, then you will be called a believer. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. But there has to come a point in your life when you do this. When you do this, that means you're going to want to change you're not going to, if you're, if you're drinking, you're not going to want to drink anymore. Amen. If you're doing all kinds of crazy things, you're not going to want to do that anymore. Amen. You're going to want to change. Why? Because you're self-righteous now? No. It's because you want to honor God. So if there be anybody in here that would like to ask Jesus to be your Savior, I mean, you've never asked Christ. I'm pretty sure 
all of us are pretty good here, but I always want to ask if there's anybody in here. And if there's anyone in, in TV land there, if you guys want to know Jesus, it's as easy as a prayer. When you pray this prayer and you ask Jesus, it says, you will be saved. For with confession and believing, the Lord comes into your heart and he'll stay with you. And But the other thing you need to do is you need to talk to somebody or tell somebody what you've done. You might have a Christian friend. Uh, send Pastor Greg here an email. It would be awesome. But if I can get the worship team to come on up. We're going to pray real quick here. So I want all you believers in here to pray for those maybe that, that don't know Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you as we've read your word this morning, this evening rather. We've read this word about how you take care of us and you love us and you keep us and you do. And we thank you for the promise. But Lord, there might be somebody in here or even out there that doesn't have that. They haven't made that commitment yet. They need to be born again is what your word says. That's what you told Nicodemus, the religious leader. We have to be born again. What that means is your spirit needs to be renewed. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart, his Holy Spirit indwells you and everything changes and it's for good. I promise you. If there be anybody in here with your heads bowed, is there anybody in here and say, Sam, I want to know Jesus as my Savior. I've never prayed for, I never asked God into my heart. Is there anybody in here? Raise your hand if there is. Praise the Lord. Everybody here knows for you out there, I won't unfortunately be able to see your hands, but God sees your hand. He hears your cry. Tonight I might have shared something that just kind of blew you away. You don't have peace. You've tried sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and there's never been no peace. There never will be. You've tried making lots of money. Nothing wrong with making money, but if you put it in place of God, you're never going to be happy. You need to come to know Jesus. Let's pray this prayer together, all of us. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Make me brand new. Help me to go to church and walk away from sin. Write my name in your book of life. Help me to live for you. Your word says that there are promises that if I confess and I believe, you will come into my heart. I don't understand this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Lord, thank you for those people. If there be anybody out there that has asked you to come into their heart, help them to share with somebody. Help them to come to a church. Help them to just learn and grow. Help them to just know that above all, you love us. You're a good God, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.
evening huh all right well praise the lord you guys don't forget we have food in the back and we will see you sunday morning bright and early god bless you hi everybody pastor greg calvary chapel harupa valley hey we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos and we just know that god has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings. But you know, we'd like to give you a challenge. Since this material is available, as you know, you can go to the website and pull these videos down, but we would like to challenge you. Since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis, we wanna challenge you, why not share these videos? You've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media. Why not inject the gospel message, the Bible teachings, of the Lord into, into your share partners. It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been join, joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries, but again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord, Thank you so much and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now.